I'm not going to brag about it, but uh, I guess that was clearly inspirational. Hey guys, do you remember Argon 1? It was a pretty awesome case and I've talked about this case in this video here, so you can queue it up to watch it later. In this video, obviously, we're going to focus on Argon 1 M.2 because that's what happened a couple of weeks ago. Argon 40 released this beautiful case. Now, it's slightly thicker than the previous case, but it comes with a massive advantage. Thanks to this case, you can actually take advantage of the boot from USB and that is available for Raspberry Pi 4. If you haven't tried this already, I've covered it already, it's quite easy and there is a guide in here for you linked, so you will have no problem trying it on and taking the adv advantage of the high speed of the SSDs and that you can add. Now, some time ago, I've made Argon 18, which was the same take as Argon 40 with M.2, but you use X857 board with MSATA drive. In this video, we're going to find out whether Argon 40 with M.2 is faster and what you should do if you already got Argon 1 without M.2 support. The case retails for $45, so it is a considered investment. However, if you already got Argon 1, don't worry, you don't have to buy another one. What you can also get is just a $20 module that will add that support for M.2 for your existing Argon board. If you decide in favor of the M.2 module instead of the entire case, you're going to be missing out on a couple of features. First of all, full HDMI ports at the back. Argon 1 M.2 comes with two HDMI ports with the regular size, unlike the mini HDMI present on the Argon 1, the original board. So if you really, really wanted to have the traditional HDMI cable in use, you probably would have to uh, take the wallet out and get the Argon 1 M.2 instead. It's not just HDMI that you're getting. Inside, that's been a small redesign of the power board. Infrared is populated, so if you want to use a remote control, you'll be able to do it out of the box. There are even libraries available via a website from Argon40 that you can use and start using this case with remote control. Power delivery system also had an overhaul and now there is a present jumper to define how you would like your power button to behave. It addresses the problem original Argon1 had when power loss wouldn't actually power the Raspberry Pi again once the power was restored. Now, thanks to the jumper, you can select appropriate behavior, and if you wanted your Raspberry Pi to restore its functionality after the power loss, it is simply possible with the jumper switch. But before you get on Amazon to get that M.2 uh, drive, just make sure you're buying a SATA one as NVMe isn't supported as Raspberry Pi 4 uh, doesn't have a PCI Express slot exposed. Don't worry, only because you don't have NVMe, it doesn't mean that you're actually losing out on speed. To prove it, I've pitched the M.2 SATA I've got in here against the M SATA that I had from my X857 board. And after a couple of benchmarks, it was clear as a day that actually it is not the drive that creates the bottleneck, it's the Raspberry Pi itself. So don't panic, especially if you want to use Raspberry Pi as a network storage, because at the end of the day, it's the network interface, the one gigabit per second one, it's gonna be the bottleneck. How about thermal performance then? Since the shell hasn't changed that much, I would expect very similar results to the original Argon 1. And indeed, after testing both cases, Argon 1 M.2 runs slightly hotter. And I think the reason behind it was that I actually put a Raspberry Pi for 8 gigs of RAM inside, which tends to run slightly hotter than the other boards. Overall, the temperatures were about 2 degrees warmer, so you shouldn't really be concerned. Since I had an access to a flare gun, I took also a couple of pictures and a video so you could see the heat dissipation in a case when it's running in a passive mode. 
What I found surprising that running the phone at 100% speed doesn't really decrease the temperature all that much. The fan didn't really cool down Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM. The temperature was lower for about 1 to 2 degrees, and that's about all. So, if you're planning on running this case, passive cooling is probably the way to go. Argon 1 M.2 still looks beautiful despite being slightly thicker. It has those interesting features that I really appreciated from the original design. There is a magnetic lid that covers all the GPIOs. The GPIO header is exposed and also color coded and numbered for your convenience. And overall, the form factor of the case encourages you to use that case as a NOC computing for your desktop station. Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM makes a perfect Raspberry Pi for desktop environment, and this case is there to complement that. So if you're really interested, take a look at the description of this video, you're gonna find a couple of links where to get it. Or just get yourself an extension for M.2 and take advantage of the boot from USB on your Raspberry Pi 4. I'd like to thank Argon40 for sending me this case so I could talk about it a little bit more in details. Argon18 went through another redesign and I've added Zigbee inside an external antenna to make sure Zigbee gets the best reception. In this video there I've talked about Argon Neo, another product from Argon40, and soon I'm gonna take a closer look to add this board and MSATA support to a smaller profile case. Let me know what do you think about this case and whether you are interested in running Raspberry Pi 4s with boot from USB mode. Now, as usual guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what's gonna happen next and when that mod for Argon Neo is gonna be ready, it's best to follow me on social media of your choice. You know how you use YouTube and how it works, so I'm not going to teach you that. For now, I'm just going to say thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.